Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. Let's see if I can film this quickly before my dog starts whining for a walk. This is my top favorite books of 2021. I wanted to run through them in two categories. I'm going to talk first about fiction and then non-fiction. I have about seven or eight for each. So let's start first with fiction and all my favorite kids books that were fiction. These aren't in a true particular order, so here we go. The first one is When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller. I really, really love this book. This is a mix between fantasy and magical realism with contemporary fiction, and it's a book about dealing with grief from a family perspective and the main character who is shy, moving to a new town and, and making new friends. Very moving and touching, and I really enjoyed my time with it. It made me feel like I stretched my idea of what it is that is my favorite thing to read in kids fiction um, because sometimes when I read middle grade books I only like really grounded in real life contemporary fiction and this one definitely mixed some fantastical elements in it and I, I was really on board with it. I also really loved Witches of Brooklyn by Sophie Escabase. I read two of those this past year. The first one definitely I loved more than the second one but they're both very very sweet books about found family about becoming a witch and um, having elders with you teaching you these things. It's also just like a really cozy story just the way that it's drawn and the feelings that are evoked from the family dynamic in it. Another book that I loved that's a classic that I've only just got to in 2021 is Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech and I had always been looking forward to reading this book and it just hadn't happened until this year and I just loved my experience with it. Every time that I think about it I feel really warm inside and that's exactly what I look for in a middle grade book. I loved the way that it talked about family. I love the grandparents in it. There are some real like trials and tribulations that the main character goes through when it comes to family members and grief and you know moving on. How difficult that is as a child. There's also just a lot of quirkiness in it and her dynamic with her friend. It really brought me back to like how I was as a kid and the kinds of things that my brain like thought up that absolutely make no sense but as a kid uh, you like really build things up in your brain and you have a very imaginative brain um, so it had those really nice moments where it was soft and lighthearted but it also had those very touching moving moments that I look forward to in middle grade. I definitely was super happy I read this and the audiobook experience of it was superb. Another kids book that I really loved was Watch Over Me by Nina LeCur. I read this one in a car ride and I read it in like two days. I was so enamored with it. I thought that it was so beautiful in how it used this setting and the transformation that this main character is going through. This one, like When You Trap a Tiger, dealt with some fantastical elements. There are some ghosts in this book and in Watch Over Me they are used to tell you something about what the main character has gone through and where she is at in her life. I love this book because of how it really centered this older main character who was still a teenager. This is a perfect read for late high school into early college. I feel like sometimes that's a really hard type of book to find where the elements are more mature but um, there are still aspects to it that do make it feel like it's not a straight up adult book. I really valued it for that. Um, I thought that it was very subtle and I love that in books. It was very quiet and the pace was really slow. One book that I really really loved, I gave five stars, I actually have with me, is Borders. This is by Thomas King, illustrated by Natasha Donovan, who illustrated the Survive the City series. This is a really simple story, but it is so eloquent, it is so smart, it is so, um, in the same way that I just mentioned the last book, subtle in how it is delivering its message. It is really not super overt and it makes the reader come up to their own conclusions which i love in a graphic novel it is sparse so there's not a lot going on in the dialogue but the way that the faces are drawn the way that they change through the different panels you see that there's stuff happening like stuff is happening <laughs> in kind of like the subconscious in the in the brain that is not being said out loud yeah it is a story about place it is a story about where indigenous people belong, who they are, what nation they are a part of. I'm sorry if you can hear it, they're doing some cutting across the street, <laughs> I guess. A really smart look at where it is that indigenous people belong to when we have this construct of the United States and Canada. It's this mother saying, I am Blackfoot, I am nothing else, I am not Canadian, I am not American, I am Blackfoot, and not being able to cross 
through the two borders of these two countries. I didn't know how it was going to end. Watching it, how it actually ended, I think was really, really great. So I love this book and I really recommend it. It's a great one. Now let's talk about the three adult fiction books that I really loved this year. I really liked Acts of Desperation. This was another one that I read in the car and I couldn't stop reading. It's not a fun book to read. It is not a book that I read and then I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> that ended great. No, it's a sad story. It's a depressing story and it doesn't get better. As you keep reading, you're like, this can't get any lower and then it does get worse. The main character is someone who is truly doing things to sabotage themselves and to hurt themselves and she is in a lot of pain and acting out and it's not pretty. So I could not stop reading i could not stop watching this train wreck and i wanted to see what happened with her if you like books about horrible main characters who are trying to exist in this world and making bad choices for themselves you will probably like this book it reminded me a lot of luster where the main character is like doing things that are not good for her or exciting times it kind of reminded me of the main characters of those two books where they are really self-deprecating and bad to themselves and they just keep existing <laughs> um, and you, you you're wanting to shake them and tell them do better another book that i really loved was a book of short stories and that was the secret lives of church ladies i thought that all of the stories in this had something to give me and i really felt compelled by these characters they were all so different but all kind of dealing with similar issues it was one that i read towards the beginning of the year that i really really loved and i thought about for the rest of the year and then last but not least was one that i read towards the end of the year and really loved and that was we run the tides by vandela vita i read this book again in like two days and i think that's something that i really value in adult fiction books is that they can keep me really intrigued and wanting to finish them. This book is a coming of age story like the type of coming of age stories that I enjoy where um, the main character is looking back on her life dealing with growing up as a girl in this world. She's growing up in San Francisco and it's set in a historical time period I think the 80s. Her dealing with this frenemy that she has that's kind of similar to the dynamic between Lila and Lenu in uh, My Brilliant Friend. I really loved this book. I loved how it ended. I loved all of the things that were happening, I thought the way that she developed, like as a, you know, what her beliefs are, like as a sexual being, um, as a as a friend, were really interesting topics. One that I really didn't have that much of expectation for, but after I finished it, I was like, that is a darn good book. Okay, that is it for my fiction books. Let us talk about nonfiction books. I have seven. Some of these I have talked about throughout the year. One of them is American Baby, which I read towards the beginning of 2021. This is a story about a family who had to give up their baby, basically forced because she was an unwed mother during a time period when there were these really strange adoption services that were around to help people who couldn't have children, um, but Basically, they were taking children from these mothers without their true consent, kind of forcing them to. And it's about this man trying to figure out more information about his birth family. This is a great narrative nonfiction story. This is great if you enjoy like post-World War II history. There are some really fascinating subjects here about like ethics, what was okay at the time for women to do with their bodies. Another one that I really loved that I couldn't put down was Victim F. This is a memoir from the point of view of um, a man and a, a woman who are now married but at the time were just dating. Basically it was like a home invasion and then the woman was taken and the man was told like you can't call the cops etc and it it was this whole situation of trying to get her back. Thankfully, they were able to, but she went through a lot of trauma during the time that she was kidnapped. And it's them retelling what it is that happened and then also who they believe did this. There's a lot of strange stuff going on underneath the surface having to do with police malpractice and like people that police know and some cover up kind of elements of it. The police really tried to make it seem like she wanted to get kidnapped and become famous as a result of that. I really enjoyed this book and lots of trigger warnings though, for sure, a hard one to listen to. I also really enjoyed Invisible Child. This is a look into a girl's growing up um, and dealing with the foster system and the welfare system. A girl that had a lot of brains and had a lot of opportunities to get her education, but that dealt with a lot of issues having to do with the welfare system, the social safety net uh, system in Brooklyn that led her family to be separated basically. They had I think five siblings and they all ended up in different places and it's her going through this journey of 10 plus years of her 
finding these opportunities, the family being intact, the family then not being intact, and them trying to come back together, um, all of the hardships that they face as a result of that. This is a great book for people who love to see kind of transformations over time, to see what the social safety net that we have in this country is supposed to do versus what it's actually doing. And it's kind of just like a snapshot of this bigger issue that is happening in this bigger system. I also really loved Nomadland. This was a book that had been on my TBR for a long time and I listened to over the summer. It was fantastic. It was really funny, funnier than I anticipated that it was going to be. And it's about different people who are basically living in vans and moving around the United States following jobs and opportunities. How they took the situation of not having a home, not having enough money to make ends meet, and then became van dwellers basically. A lot of this focuses on how it is that this life is lived, how they find community and trade information and supplies, um, and what kinds of jobs they do to keep going. A lot of this had to do with them working things like Amazon or working with the National Park Service and it was fascinating seeing these kinds of jobs expected of them. A lot of these people are a lot older and it's fascinating to see how they have to live life because this American dream is not really happening for them. The movie sparked me wanting to read this book and the same people that are in the movie are in the book so a lot of the things that happen are the same but you get a fuller picture of who these people are. They are truly astonishing like quirky interesting people from all walks of life. You get to see what their dreams and aspirations are and you know their highs and their lows. I loved The Undocumented Americans. This is a, one of the first books that I read in 2021 and really stuck with me. The author looks into different immigrant situations. She is looking at people who are forgotten, who are undocumented immigrants in the United States. All different kinds of people like people who may be staying at churches for asylum or people who help clean up after 9-11 on ground zero. The last chapter focuses on her father and her relationship to her father and it was very very moving. This book is is written kind of in your face. I don't think that the way that is written is for everyone but I think she really gets to know the immigrant experience that sometimes is I feel like hiding and that we don't really get to hear. I also really loved No Filter. This is one that I read towards the end of 2021 and I thought was so well done. It was really captivating and engaging. It was written in a way that was very fast paced. It looked into the founding of Instagram to being sold to Facebook and things like that. It looks at all of these backroom kind of deals. There's a lot of stuff happening in the background that is either sus or kind of bonkers to think about. Like the money that is being exchanged is also kind of like I can't wrap my head around it. Uh, the personalities also, how everybody views the world differently when it comes to like how to scale and grow a company. So it was just fascinating to me to see how this like tiny idea that wasn't even like fully formed when it started has grown into to this empire that now is like creating jobs for influencers. Last but not least, I really loved Children Under Fire. This is a book that looks into two kids particularly who were affected by gun violence in their lives in two separate areas of the country and then they became pen pals and started leaning on each other to deal with the trauma of a gun violence event. One was at a school so it happened while the, a little girl was at her school to her friend and one was a little boy whose dad passed away after being killed by someone who shot him. It's looking into how kids deal with trauma and how to stop these things from happening in the first place. The way that it was structured and the way that it's telling this, this story of these two kids and how they found each other, completely different kinds of kids and that are connected by this very traumatic event, um, I think is very powerful. And if you care about gun violence in America, I think this is important because children are the most affected by this and children are at the mercy of adults in this situation and if adults can't get their together then kids are going to continue to be maimed physically and mentally and killed by guns. So. I really also thought that that was a very, very good book. So that is it. Those are my top books that I loved in 2021. If you've read any of these or would like to read any of these now that you've heard about them, please let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.